friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another this and that video. And I'm going to show you the whole process of how I get my kefir going. And my water kefir that is. And today I'm going to be making apple cinnamon. Now before I show you how to do that, I want to get some of this other stuff out of the way. So I want to talk about it first. And that is this beautiful candle holder that Smokey sent us. All hand forged. It's his own design. It comes with a separate hook. I gotta show you just the hook alone, I, I think is beautiful. Just has a wonderful shape. So you can attach this to your wall like this and it'll hold, just like we do with our, our gas lanterns, it'll hold this out away from the wall and then you can put two stick candles or taper can tapers in there. Or you could even hang it from the ceiling this way if you wanted to. It just, it just really depends. I haven't decided yet where we're going to put it, but uh, I'm just, I'm just so thrilled with this. Thank you so much, Smokey. It's beautiful. It's absolutely my style and the kind of thing I like. Oh, I got to show you the close-up of this too. Just, just very beautifully made. And then another gift I got from Mary was if those of you who watched my video I did on the Fido jars, I'll go ahead and link to that up here. Uh, one of our subscribers, Elizabeth, had sent us a, just a huge blessing of a whole bunch of Fido jars in all different sizes. And you can see this one right here is my favorite size for fermenting my eggs because I can put 18 eggs in here. But anyway, one of the jar lids on the biggest one got busted in transit. And so I looked all over trying to find a replacement lid for it and couldn't find one. Well, Mary happens to find this lid that she's pretty sure is going to fit because it's also made it was also made in Italy I think she said it was for a spaghetti sauce jar it was an old jar that she had and since she knew it was made in Italy she was thinking maybe it could have even been made by the same company and so she took a chance and she repackaged it well I mean there was no way that thing was going to break and uh it, it arrives safely and it fits perfect. So thank you again for that, Mary. So now I have lids for all my jars. And Elizabeth, I'm sure you'll be happy to know, I have lids for all my jars. So thank you both, you ladies, for doing all that. Okay, so one more thing. And that is, I was just watching Stacy's video about uh, the where she did the homemade french fries and, you know, the baked ones. And then the homemade ketchup using a tomato paste. And I'm going to try her recipe today. However, I want to try it using my home canned tomatoes and my, these are, these ones are definitely from my garden. Uh, the tomatoes that I made basically like a tomato leather out of them, dried them until they were very, very dry and then just flaked them up. I've been adding these to my Italian sauces and stuff and it works really good for thickening it up. And so I'm going to try combining the two and really add a lot more of the tomato flakes and see how thick of a ketchup I can make and I'll do a video on that too and I may do this today I may wait till tomorrow it's a busy busy day but I just wanted to show you that so if you haven't seen uh, Stacy's video I'll go ahead and link to that right up here so you can see her recipe using that and then I'll I'll try it with that and see if I can come up with something similar for making my own homemade ketchup. And, oh, and fermenting it using my um, fermentation starter instead of whey. Because fermentation starter I always have on hand, whey I don't. So anyway, and if you're new to my channel and you're interested in fermenting and how I like to do things, I'll go ahead and link to my playlist of fermenting using my own homemade fermentation starter, which you'll want to watch that one first. And then especially more my, my more recent video on the fermentation starter um, and how you can make it super, super easy and you can do it with any fruit. Okay, so let's get busy making this kefir. And first thing I'm going to do is I find the easiest thing to do is use the smallest mesh. Uh, and for, for anything fermented, I try to stick with plastic. It's the one place I prefer to use plastic because I want to make sure Nothing metal touches it. Even though stainless steel is apparently not supposed to hurt a ferment, I still try to stick with something just like this just to make sure. But I find the easiest way to do it is have the, the mesh strainer over a canning funnel and then that over a jar. And this is going to be the jar I, start, I, I add my flavorings to. 
So I just strain out. Usually I'll add a little more of the rainwater, and I only use my filtered rainwater for doing this. In fact, I only it's the only thing we use for making coffee, tea, or anything that we're going to consume, boiling noodles, anything, is the filtered rainwater. We do not consume our city water because it's got lots of chloride and chlorine in it, and especially when you're fermenting, you want to stay away from those things because they can kill your live cultures that are going to give you your good ferment. All right, then the next thing I'm going to do is, this is going to be the jar I'm going to put the grains back into. So I'm going to put about a quarter cup, maybe a shy quarter cup of, of uh, organic cane sugar. Uh, this is the evaporated cane sugar. And just a little bit of coconut sugar to add some minerals. I'm, I find if I use too much coconut sugar, it seems to actually uh, make my kefir grains get smaller over time. So I try not to go too heavy on the coconut sugar. I'm not sure why that is. It just happens every time I try doing it that way, it seems to do that. And besides, I don't like, I just don't like having too much of the coconut sugar in there. I'm gonna leave that out because I'm not done with it yet. Then I'm gonna add my water in there. I don't fill it up all the way. I just fill it up most of the way. And then I take a bamboo or any kind of wooden spoon that's small enough to get in there or even a chopstick and just stir that up. And then I usually just let it sit and then and keep stirring it up. Now I can remove the grains. I set them on my little lid like that so it's not getting all over the counter. And then to the jar that I of the kefir that I strained off of the grains, I'm going to add a little more sugar, including some more coconut sugar. This is organic. I'll link to these sugars below that I use. And just a little bit of the cane sugar because you got to remember the bacteria is eating a lot of that sugar and it's going to, if you're concerned about the sugar consumption, the bacteria is in the yeast are, are feeding on that sugar and turning it into a different substance. So if you're concerned about the sugar, you really shouldn't be. This is going to sit for another day. So this sugar in here is going to get digested. If I was going to drink this right away, which you can, you can drink this right away after you strain it off. Um, if I was going to do that, I wouldn't be adding any more sugar to it. Basically what I'm doing is feeding it right now. And now I'm going to take some of my homegrown organic apples that I dried a few years ago. It's been two and a half years at least because it's in the fall that we get our apples. Uh, just however many you feel like you want to add. I'm going to put in more than I did last time. Um, I really liked the way it turned out last batch I had. And then I'm going to throw in a single uh, Ceylon cinnamon stick. This is organic. I'll link to these below as well. And then, oh, one more thing. A little, just a little pinch of baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate. That's going to make it even more fizzy and just give it a little more boost. I just think it's a I just think it's really good. Okay, and then kind of stir that in there. And look at it. You can see it's it's fizzing. That's the kefir and the the baking soda. Really getting fizzy in there. And now I'm going to top it off the rest of the way with more water because the jar that I I do the initial the grains in is smaller anyway, which is just fine because. By the time I add all my fruits and other things in there, I need to make sure I have space in that jar. Okay, and then for this, I like to put a tight fitting lid on there so that it can really build up the fizziness. You can even shake it around a little bit gently. Don't shake it hard. Just kind of mix everything in there good. And then I'm gonna let that sit for another 24 hours and it'll be ready. Uh, Tomorrow at this time, it'll be fizzy and tasty, and then I'll store it in my fridge. I usually have several in the fridge at a time, so by the time I get to this, the flavor will be even more infused into the water kefir. Typically, I try to drink it within a week. Otherwise, it's going to keep getting stronger 
um, alcohol wise because it is turning that sugar to alcohol you got to remember that so I don't like it to get too strong it's not going to turn to wine in your refrigerator but it is going to have a small amount of an alcohol content so you got to keep that in mind uh, it's best especially if giving it to children that you give it to them within the first one to three days of going through the second ferment because you just don't want it to get too strong. I used to heat the water a little bit to help the sugar dissolve faster but then I'd have to wait for it to cool down before I could add the grains. I find this is actually quicker. It doesn't really take that long for it to dissolve. I usually just let it sit and then come back and stir it again and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to I don't have to worry about forgetting it and like if I'm heating it. Uh, but yeah, if you do heat it, you don't want to put your grains back in there until it's cooled back down to room temperature. All right, now while I'm allowing that sugar to dissolve, I'll talk about a couple other things. Uh, going back to vinegar, seems like I can't have one of these videos where I'm not talking about vinegar. I'm up to four jars on my counter now and it's getting to be too much, so I'm going to have to resort to my other method, but I'm really liking the stir method of making the vinegar. However, my grape vines are starting to leaf out and pretty soon I'll have nice big grapes, grape leaves that I can put on top of my fruit to help hold it under the liquid to help prevent the fruit itself from molding and any mold that will develop typically is going to stay on top of the grape leaf and then I can just toss that out before I strain it. This is the sage apple. This one is just about ready for me to go ahead and put on top of my refrigerator and and let it, because uh, the fruit is getting to where it's starting to sink to the bottom and then just let it finish its process on up there so it'll be out of my way. And then these two are citrus and sage and I've been stirring them at least once a day. Sometimes I'll come and do it again. And, the ni and like I said before, the nice thing about the stir method is it just it prevents you from having to bother to concern yourself at all with the mold. So if it's something that you kind of, that kind of freaks you out, the mold, this is the method I would suggest. Let me go over a couple of common questions people will have. You will see, especially if you don't stir, this, these have been stirred, but if you let your stuff just sit, you will see a white layer form on top. That is totally normal. You got a couple of different things going on there. You've got your cam yeast coming off the fruit uh, that is starting to make its own little layer on top. Sometimes you will develop a gelatinous layer that is simply the mother. It's a scoby, just like you would get in kombucha. And also, I believe some of it, because I've felt it, it has a real waxy feel. A lot of your fruits have a natural protective waxy layer to them and I believe that's what it is coming off. It just makes sense because it feels very waxy, it floats to the surface and so again it's nothing to worry about. Now this is my newest vinegar I just started the other day. It's been a few days and this one is dandelion citrus. So another another reminder by Stacy I was watching her dandelion video and I'm like that's what I've been wanting to do is make some dandelion vinegar and I keep forgetting. But since I, I had one more orange left to use up, I went ahead and threw that in there too. And it has a wonderful smell, and I think it's going to have quite a beautiful color when it's all done. So we'll be doing an update down on that down the road too, so be watching for that. So this is all dissolved. It really doesn't take that long. And if you see little dark colors in there, that's simply the minerals from the coconut sugar. If you decide to add coconut sugar, you don't have to add coconut sugar. And then you're going to simply put your kefir grains back in there. You can use your canning funnel. I already set it over there in the sink. Not thinking. And then I go ahead and top off the water. I like to do this last so that instead of topping it off with water first and then putting the kefir grains in it and then having it overflow because I forgot to leave space for it. And then I just use a plastic lid for this one. I don't, I don't put the tighter fitting lid on it. I like to let this one have just a little bit of airflow. You don't have to do it that way. You can cover it with a cloth. I've done that before. Or you can put a tight fitting lid on it. Just keep in mind that if you put a tight fitting lid on it, it is going to get fizzy in there, just like this one. So you may have to come along and burp it through the day. Just once usually is enough. But a lot of times I don't have to even bother doing that. 
This one here was already built up pressure though because I was shaking it around. So if you do this, you will have to come back in a, a little bit and release the pressure. And you can tell because it'll dome up. And so there you go. There's the start of the uh, apple cinnamon uh, water kefir. And it's going to be just just right tomorrow. I uh, stick it in the fridge, let it get nice and cold. And it, the, I just find this is my favorite drink for having something refreshing. I, I love the water kefir. And again, if you don't know what a water kefir is, and, but you know what kombucha is, they are very similar. Kombucha is, is you got the big scoby, the big scoby mother, um, and you typically use black tea or some kind of caffeinated tea to make it. Where the water keeper, you can use anything. And they're little grains, but they're still a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. That's why, so this could be considered a scoby too. It's just not a thick mat like you have when you're making kombucha. So there's that. And before I close, I want to talk a little bit more about the Mother Earth products. I will be linking to the main link, the store link below. That is my affiliate link. I have just come to really, really like their stuff. Uh, even though they don't have number 10 cans, as I said before, I have plenty of number 10 cans of Honeyville and a few of the Thrive. But Mother Earth products are my favorite because I can buy smaller amounts. You can even get smaller bags than this if you just want to try them. So if you go through my affiliate link below, you can go in there and look and look and see what they have. And the thing, I, the other thing is they're like Honeyville in the fact that you can build up points. So for every dollar you spend, you earn a point and that point gets counted towards uh, a discount on your next order. And you can add up quite a bit because and you can get free shipping if you, I can't remember what the, what it is, $75 or $100, something like that. If you order a certain amount, you can get free shipping on it. And you can order it either in the Mylar bags or in the, the plastic containers. I prefer the bags because they take up less room. I just think they're healthier. I think stuff stays fresher longer in these once you've opened them because you can zip lock it again. And... They, if you want to keep the bags, they store flat. You can reuse them for, for other things. So I highly recommend it. They're, uh, everything I've tried so far, I've really, really liked. I've tried a lot. I've had both the freeze-dried and the dehydrated sweet potatoes. I use their dehydrated potatoes. They're a lot of their different fruits. The sour cherries are really good. The raspberries, like I use in my raspberry cream chocolate. Just a lot of really good stuff that you can check them out. Oh, and their mushrooms are my favorite. I love their freeze-dried mushrooms. They have dehydrated ones too. I haven't tried, but the freeze-dried ones are so good. And you've seen me talk about those. And I can also put links to those specific ones down below if you'd like me to. And, uh, but you can just go to that main link. If I forget, just go to the main link because it's always in my description box. And then you can just shop through there and, uh, yeah and see what you like just try you know try the small the really small sizes first and see what you like best i go right for the quart size but you can also get bigger bags than this too this is a quart size you can get a much bigger bag in a lot of them so it just depends on what you're getting oh yes and i almost forgot i will also link to the posy mom water kefir grains below that's where i got mine they've been very healthy i've had them for probably about a year now and they've just been great and I have shared them the grains with other people I haven't got to the point yet where I feel like I want to start selling them but maybe down the road I will but either way you can get go through the link below and get the posy mom ones and I still get a little credit for that too because it's through the Amazon affiliate and uh, and plus you give posy mom a little bit of business there too okay well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new thanks for watching take care and God bless